Hi, it's Ramsey Dewey with the GX Fight Club in Shanghai, China. Here's some sparring footage with our friend Angelo. He came to visit from Japan. Oh. Angelo so competes <laughs> in an amateur mixed martial arts organization in Japan that has uh, a few notable rule differences to um, unified rules. And the stand-up game is basically the same. The, the ground game is a little bit different in that you're only allowed to strike to the body and I don't believe leg locks were allowed, so we're sparring specifically under those conditions. So I've taken them out, and I'm doing something I wouldn't normally do in mixed martial arts. I'm striking to the chest here, and as such, I've put myself in kind of a compromised position, but managed to sprawl down into low mount to fix that instability issue when Angelo tries to unbalance me. So I work back up into high mount, switch to side control, giving you a couple of different angles here, again striking to the body and maintaining a frame with my left arm around the head, putting some pressure on, driving toward knee mount, Angelo manages to re-guard instead of attempting to pass the guard, I go directly into the guard, put some pressure on it. And if you can see what I'm doing with my right arm, I'm working it under the body in order to trap one of his arms underneath him so that I can land shots with relative impunity. Angelo is trying to tie up my head with his left arm, but I keep his arm trapped underneath him. And then work toward a guard pass. Passing the guard, moving to north-south position, and then back to knee mount. I'm not used to striking the body from knee mount, so it's not nearly as useful a position when you cannot strike the head directly. Back into the half guard here. Two different angles. Angelo maintaining his collar tie. I'm putting pressure on him. Driving him onto his side. I notice my position relative to the wall here. So I'm working closer to the wall. When I have an opponent in guard or half guard, I'll, I like to work up against the wall. So I'm using a tripod position to attempt to pass half guard, but Angelo manages to use that space to regard completely. A few strikes to the body. And now, a two-on-one trap followed by striking. This is a technique that I will use a lot when my opponent pulls guard or, or regards. You can strike with relative impunity once they free the trapped hand. You simply repeat the process on the opposite side. That's the end of the round. Now Angelo and Linji are going to go at it. Linji starting on the bottom. Now we have two goals for the person on the bottom. The primary goal is to stand up. After that, attempt to control and submit your partner. The guy on the top, strike, pass the guard, control, submission. Essentially, we're MMA sparring under these Simple rules, you can only strike to the body of a downed opponent. So Angelo moves to half guard, pinning Linji. Now in this position, you could also call it a Turk, because if your opponent's shoulders are pinned in what looks like a half guard position, it is what you could call a Turk in wrestling. If your shoulders are not pinned, if you're able to intelligently move and fight back, yeah, you can call it half guard. You could also call this position half mount if your opponent is pinned. Remember, guard is not just wrapping your legs around the other person. If your shoulders and hips are pinned, it's basically a beat down position. If you're able to move your shoulders and hips intelligently, oh, there was a no gi Ezekiel choke. Angelo got a few of these on Linji during this, uh, this session. About halfway through the round. And they start again. Angelo putting some pressure on, attempting to go over the leg. He managed to, to do so. Now inside control. A hammer fist to the body to get Linji to separate his arm from the body. Angelo goes for a far side Americano. Linji pulls his arms in tight to avoid the submission. Angelo is now using his head to further separate Linji's arm from, from the body. And he gets that arm lock. Starting over. A 
quick guard pass. Moving around the side of the knee. Into side control. Angelo's thinking about that arm again. Linji remembers the last time, keeps his arms in tight, at least attempts to. Angelo is doing a really good job using his head here to separate Linji's arm th from the body, and seconds. there we are with an arm lock. And the same guard pass once again. If it's not broken, no reason to fix it, directly over into mount position. Quick, small movements, and there's that no-gi Ezekiel, Ezekiel choke that Angelo is so good at. It's one of those moves that you don't see a lot outside of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with the gi, because there are no sleeves to anchor the hands on, but uh, if you have the the position, oh, Linji just got right back up again. If you have the position and you, you have the compressive strength there, cartwheel pass, I like to do that. It's a possibility. Even from the bottom, it's, it's rare, but it's possible. Once again, standing in Linji's open guard. And right here I'm doing something that I ordinarily would not do under unified rules, which is bringing my head uh, closer to his feet. However, right here I amended that, and now I'm connecting my head to his torso. But I'm putting my head within up kick range, but since up kicks are illegal under this specific amateur rule set that we're sparring under, yeah, milk the rules all you want. And the leapfrog guard pass right there. It's a silly looking but highly effective guard pass that puts you directly into mount. Separating the arm. Thinking about an arm bar. Now the strikes, when you're only allowed to strike to the body, since there's such limited damage you can do in these positions, it's more of a positional tool to strongly encourage your opponent to move and change position. Here's an armbar setup I learned watching a Keenan Cornelius video. And I practiced this one a lot. I think his video is called The Best Armbar That Nobody's Using. And yeah, it's absolutely true. Uh, I use this one a lot now. Great, great technique. Go check that out on Keenan's channel if you're not already subscribed. Again, standing up in Linji's guard. Control of one foot, put it on the outside of my hip. I attempt a spinning guard pass, but I'm horribly off balance and that looked like garbage, but live and learn. Attempting a cartwheel guard pass, managed to clear the knee this time. Directly to knee mount, a few strikes to the body, leaning into almost full mount, but I'm deliberately putting one foot in between his his thighs in a hope that he is going to trap it into quarter guard so that I can roll directly to his back, but he's not taking the bait. So I attack the upper body. I see an opening for an arm bar. He leaves that arm behind, I catch it, and I use the shaky leg finish to break his grip. I made a video about that one a while back, go check that one out. Not the best cartwheel guard pass, but it allowed me to get a, around the legs and hook the hips just enough. Now it's me and Angelo. Angelo starts on top. And I hit the elevator sweep directly into side control. I hook the hip, frame on the head, move to north-south position, which I find is an extremely effective position to control basically anybody, especially strong people, good grapplers. It's, it's just easier for me to control people from north-south than from uh, side control when they're intelligently moving. And I use that to transition to knee mount to full mount. If you're not familiar with that transition, give it a try. So from full mount, I ride him on the side a little bit, attempting the same strategies I tried with Linji. I allowed him to trap a foot, hoping that he'll give up his side, allow me to take the back. He does not. He tries to hip escape. I move into a cradle. Attempted Darce right here, but he is going to drive his left shoulder to the floor, cutting off the space that I need 
to finish that choke. Now he's pinning himself in north-south position, but uh, he doesn't get choked. A little up kick to a, uh, a stand-up. So I'm not sure if it's just up kicks to the head that were illegal under this rule set, and up kicks to the body were okay, but uh, yeah, just go with it. Rule number one of all fighting, protect yourself at all times. So people foul you all the time in MMA. So a sweep right there from my open guard. And the guard pass, one of my favorites. Put one of their feet on the outside of your hip and drive your knee between their legs and one onto their outside hip. Move to side control. Again, north-south, two knee mount, two mount. One of my favorite transitions. Angelo tries to unbalance me. I roll with it. Straight back into side control, then to knee mount. And a lot of intelligent hip movement from, from Angelo. He's a, he's a good grappler. And his striking, his stand-up game is, is pretty good. I didn't get any footage of his stand-up game, but uh, I, was, I was pretty impressed with what I saw. to full mount here again. Attempting to set up an arm bar. Angelo keeping his arms tight and he rolls. Dust on balance and recover half guard. It's kind of halfway between half and quarter guard. And I stand, make an opening. Attempt to control his feet and then transition to a cradle. That's the end of the round. I love cradles, I use them a lot. It's a very powerful control position for mixed martial arts and submission grappling. Linji is now on top, Angelo on the bottom. Linji firing shots to the body. Getting a little reachy there. Angelo using his hip movement to re-guard right there. Now in the closed guard, breaking down Linji's posture with his collar ties. Linji postures up a little bit, making some space to strike. A little bit of hand fighting here. Angelo attempting to break Linji's posture down. I'd like to see him use his legs a little more rather than trying to sit up and pull him down with the upper body. Because when your opponent has frames on the top, like Linji does, it's going to take a lot of strength to do that. But some good hip movement from Angelo right here. He's got a nice angle right there. And he's setting up a triangle choke. Notice he controls his shin to put pressure on the head to break the posture down and finishes the triangle, gets the tap. Set. Same position. They start over. Angelo on the bottom, Linji on top. Linji attempting to get control of a foot and sits down attempting a straight ankle lock. Angelo trying to fight the lock, but Linji manage, manages to finish. Starting over, almost looked like Linji was trying a cartwheel pass, but didn't quite get his legs up high enough, so Angelo caught him in guard, gets a hip bump sweep. Nice, simple, basic technique that works from high level to low level. And the key lock submission. Linji really needs to get his legs up if he wants to vault over his opponent's legs with a cartwheel pass. But it's something we're working on. Angelo gets a nice angle on his right side. Right here he could set up a sweep like that, a Kimura or a guillotine choke. Angelo is now in full mount, attempting the Ezekiel choke without the gi, and he finishes it. With the MMA gloves, you can actually grab the straps. You're not allowed to grab the straps of your opponent's gloves, but your own. You can always grab your own equipment in mixed martial arts. So it's very important to understand the rules of a sport you're competing in. 
and understand how to exploit them to the fullest. Hey, thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.